And so where Tilt's able to step in is really make sure that, you know, as an employee goes out on leave, there are certain steps that a manager goes through uh, to help prepare them for that leave and know what to say and what to ask for of the employee. Um, and as they're on leave, you know, the same thing. Here are things that should that need to be done. Here are things that should be done uh, to make sure that all your bases are covered uh, and that, you know, we, you know, we keep you, um, you know, walking that fine line of compliance throughout the entire process. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here with Brandon Salisbury from Tilt. Hey, Brandon, how's it going? Hey, Andy, good to be with you. You too. Great to have you here. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the conversation and learning more about Tilt. Tell me a little bit about what you do at Tilt. You're the VP of marketing there, yeah? Yeah, so I'm the VP of marketing here at Tilt. Uh, I joined the company about six months ago, really, you know, when when Jen Henderson, our CEO, uh, and uh, Jesse, who is our VP of sales, reached out and, and kind of told me a little bit about the company. You know, I just instantly fell in love with the mission of the company. Uh, my my background personally is uh, comes from my early days in the YMCA, very mission driven organization. Uh, my later years have been uh, more focused in in technology, uh, and so this was, you know, just a perfect fit for me to be able to to marry the two uh, two things that I enjoy in in my career, which is being mission driven and and really serving a, a solid purpose while also serving in the in a technology space. And so, um, you know, instantly fell in love with what the company was trying to do. It's a very easy mission to, you know, to rally behind. Uh, you know, here at Tilt, our, our goal essentially is to help leave, not suck. Um, and so very, you know, very short and sweet, but uh, we were founded on the premise that, you know, traditionally um, leave, can, leave can be a difficult experience, both for the company that's administering the leave and also for, you know, really the employee who is going through, you know, potentially a, a life changing moment and really needs that support. And so to be able to join a company that really uh, helps to bridge the gap between, you know, both the company and the employee to to make a positive experience for all uh, really, really is what drove me to to be here at Tilt. Very cool. I appreciate the background there. So tell me a little bit about what leave is when somebody leaves. Like, what does that mean to you, and what's the context that that happens within? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, leave can uh, come in all shapes in multiple shapes and sizes. It could be for you know parental leave. Uh, you know, when a, a newborn um, enters the world, and, and parents you know take that time to um, you know to be with that newborn child. It could also come in, in the form of military leave. Um, it could be bereavement leave. Uh, so any anywhere where they're taking kind of an, an extended leave of absence, um, you know, that's really where we're able to step in and, and help the company uh, really manage those in an organized way that also shows support for their employees. Um, within leave, not only are there different types of leave, but, you know, with, with uh, so many different programs happening at the state level, uh, there are there are changing laws depending on which of the 50 states your employee happens to be in. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it really can, you know, really can become a mess um, trying to keep up with different laws, especially with, um, you know, remote workforces. And so um, managing things like, you know, programs like FMLA, uh, short term disability, things like that. Um, you know, it, it, all of those things, you know, really come into play when you're talking about leave on top of, you know, the varying types of leave that an employee might take. So this is a leave. This isn't an exit. This isn't somebody leaving the company to uh, go get another job somewhere else or, or what have you. This is them taking an extended period of leave and, and having a way for them to be able to easily tie up their loose ends or pass their responsibilities on to somebody else for that period of time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when when a when an employee goes out on leave, the the goal is that they'll be able to be reboarded into the company uh, and that they will eventually return um, you know, to the company in, in some capacity. And so, you know, when an employee leaves, you know, there's there's an obvious gap in in talent for during that time. And so helping companies stay on top of that and and planning ahead. Uh, but also on the employee side, there's a lot of paperwork that generally can go into 
uh, applying for FMLA or short-term disability, uh, different programs like that. And so, you know, being able to be there to uh, to guide both the company and the employee through the process uh, so they're not, you know, really left out on their own. That makes a lot of sense. And it seems like such an area that uh, is often looked over. So when it does happen, it can be a surprise to everybody and then people are scrambling. So this is a way to help them get ahead of that. Um, tell me a little bit about your customers. Are, are they the HR department? Is it the COOs at companies? Who's your who's your buyer for your your service? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so typically um, when we're when we're working with an organization, we're generally working through uh, the leader of the the people operations team, or, or perhaps they call it human resources. Uh, and so we're, you know, VP of, of people operations, CHROs, um, you know, generally people with those titles, uh, potentially even the benefits manager or lead administrator. Uh, we generally, you know, we typically play well with with companies that are in a couple of different industries, uh, not the least of which are, you know, technology and software, uh, the e-learning te- um, industry, healthcare, apparel, entertainment, um, and uh you know, really, really thrive with companies between, you know, 50 to 3000 ish uh, employees. Um, that's where, you know, our software is best, best suited uh, at the moment. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's kind of who we're typically working with and, and kind of that framework. Yeah. And so do you also work with payroll platforms like ADP or Gusto or other you know, payroll platforms like that, that uh, are sort of the uh, financial platform to handle that leave period? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we we generally play well with a lot of different softwares in the, the HR software space. So you have your, your HRIS, which, you know, you've got like the ripplings of the world that are managing, you know, your onboarding paperwork and, and uh, things like that on the HR front, but also your payroll systems like the ADPs and, and so on. Uh, and so we, you know, we, we do play very well in that space, just, you know, keeping, uh, particularly pay calculations up to date and, and accurate uh, so the payroll teams know exactly what an employee is getting paid and, and where that funding is coming from. Right. And so um, so tell me like about the experience. So a, a new customer comes to you and, uh, and they're onboarded with your platform. Talk to me about what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So we, uh, with our, with the way that our onboarding is set up, we have a dedicated implementation team uh, or and they'll be assigned a, a specific guide that will basically take them through getting their you know getting all of their um, all their lead plans you know kind of set up and their templates set up uh, so that they are ready to begin administering and managing lead through tilt uh, after that initial setup takes place uh, they're introduced to a customer success manager that's there to answer questions field questions and kind of you know make sure that they're successful uh, on the company side. And as employees uh, take leave, they are then assigned a leave success manager who is dedicated to be there and support uh, the employee that's actually going out on leave. Uh, so they're, you know, their their hand is really held uh, not not just from the beginning of the process, but really for the duration of our, um, you know, of our relationship with the company. Yeah, it seems like part of the uh, the benefit is not only to help those companies have this be a smooth transition, but also stay within compliance. I would imagine compliance is a big part of what you're helping your clients with. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. You know, on one side you have the, you know, the fact that, you know, HR teams, uh, you know, people operations teams, they, they truly genuinely want to take care of their people. Uh, and they, they want to make sure that they're, you know, taking care of when they're on leave. But the reality is there, there is a very, um, a very real pain that comes in terms of, you know, uh, compliance issues, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, managers, uh, managers of of people teams, not necessarily in the people operations department, but, but true, you know, managers of people, uh, you know, they're very good at their job, but they, they're not, you know, they're not seeing a leave of absence take place every day. So they're not always kept up to date on, you know, what to say, what not to say, uh, what's okay to ask of an employee and what's not, uh, because it's just not something that you handle on a daily basis, to be quite frank. 
And so where Tilt's able to step in is really make sure that, you know, as an employee goes out on leave, there are certain steps that a manager goes through uh, to help prepare them for that leave and know what to say and what to ask for of the employee. Um, and as they're on leave, you know, the same thing. Here are things that should that need to be done. Here are things that should be done uh, to make sure that all your bases are covered uh, and that, you know, we, you know, we keep you, um, you know, walking that fine line of compliance throughout the entire process. Um, and then finally, you know, keeping that reboarding process in mind of when an employee comes back to back from leave, you know, how to approach that. Uh, you know, the, the Department of Labor uh, estimated over three hundred and thirty eight uh, uh, million dollars being uh, returned through uh, payment issues uh, wow. in, as of 2018. And so, you know, it's a, there's a real uh, real calculation uh, to what uh, mismanagement of leave really can cause an organization. Uh, and so we want to be there to make sure that you know an organization is taken care of uh, from not only the the uh, employee experience but also you know compliance and legal issues. Yeah, that's 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 a hidden cause definitely, and I, I think a lot of companies probably don't know that that even exists. So it's really interesting that you're helping companies uh, uh, kind of defend against that, so that they're they're not spending that kind of money uh, unknowingly. Um, Let's switch gears a little bit and tell me a little bit about the origin story of the company. How did the company start? Uh, you know, people love to hear about how somebody had an idea one day and then they put it into action. And, and now here you guys are as a thriving company. Um, tell me how the, what's the story with the company? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Till was really founded from, uh, from really from our founder, Jen, experiencing the firsthand way that companies manage work leave. Uh, you know, far too often it was it was truly just an unmitigated dumpster fire. Um, you know, as as our company began working with employers, uh, what we really found was that you know miscommunication, reactive behavior, biases, uh, and assumptions were really the root of 99% of the issues, leading to poor leave experiences for everyone involved. Uh, again, that's not just the company and and the employee, uh, but also the managers that are involved in the process. Uh, and so what we what we, real, we realize is that, you know, a lot of those things can and should be uh, prevented up front. Uh, and so, you know, Jen and, and uh, you know, as as uh, Jen and Kate and eventually Royce, Jesse, uh, you know, as, as more and more joined in this cause, uh, we knew that a, a solution would uh, require a cost saving innovative technology uh, that took the administrative burden off uh, maxed out people teams while keeping HR employees and managers engaged in the process. Uh, and today, HR managers, you know, juggling remote workforces, rapidly changing leave laws, uh, exposure to compliance risk and, and dramatic uh, increases of, of all types of leave requests uh, on top of their daily responsibilities uh, really led us to knowing, hey, there's there's gotta be a better way. Uh, and so that's really where, where we came from. What it all boiled down to was, you know, really experiencing you know, a bad leave experience firsthand and just, you know, d digging into that, hey, if, if I'm experiencing this, if Jen's experiencing this, we're, you know, I'm sure there are others that are experiencing, you know, the same same thing. And so, um, you know, we dug into it, found those found those areas that, you know, we knew we can make an impact and, and improve on. And uh, that's what's led us to be what we are today. Yeah, I, I love those kinds of stories of innovation. You know, it's that that necessity is the mother of invention, right? So, uh, <laughs> out, out of a out of a situation like that comes this really useful idea to be able to solve the problem, not only in that instance, but for every other company that that experiences that. So interesting. Tell me a little bit about on the business side. How do you guys generate revenue? Yeah, so our our uh, revenue model is uh, we're a subscription based organization, uh, and so there's a there's a, a monthly subscription that's generally paid out at a, on an annual basis, um, and it's it's really priced per employee, uh, so that no matter what employee takes leave, we know you know they're taken care of within our within our platform. Uh, it's a relatively inexpensive software in comparison to some you know some other uh, HR related softwares. Um, but it really is is done, you know, on a subscription basis. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about the growth of the company. Like, how how are you growing the company? Uh, what are what are you know even success stories or what are your plans in twenty twenty three? 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, uh, we've been around for about five years. Uh, you know, it take the first couple of years are really like understanding uh, which companies are really going to benefit the most from, from our software. Uh, this year, we, you know, we, we started the year at, uh, you know, about 1.5, $1.6 million in annual revenue. This year, we'll, we'll finish the year uh, just under $5 million in revenue. So Fantastic. more than doubled in size. Congrats. Uh, and, yeah. And, and, the even better news is like we're on this trajectory to not just like double that again, but even like surpass doubling our size again, uh, shooting for between 10 to 12 million in annual revenue next year. So it's just this hockey stick of growth. And and really, you know, that that just reiterates the need that's out there. Um, you know, no software sees that that type of growth without truly like scratching an itch and, and uh, you know, serving a purpose. Um, and so for this year. Uh, what we've really set up as a foundation is, you know, and and one reason, Andy, that you and I have clicked so well is, you know, we both believe in delivering value up front. And uh, and that's that's our approach uh, to growth is, you know, if we if we do our job and we provide value, um, you know, the then when organizations are ready to address that need, you know, we're going to be front and center. We're going to be top of mind because we will have helped them solve uh, a related issue um, beforehand. And so our, our entire uh, marketing model strategy really is delivering value on the front end, um, you know, getting our brand and our name out there and, and being some, something that somebody can trust before they decide to enter into uh, the relationship that is a, you know, a subscription of the software. Um, and, and that served us well uh, up to this point. And, uh, you know, like I, like I mentioned, has really set us on this trajectory to, to achieve the goals we hope to achieve this year. Congrats. That's, I love that story. And, and the trajectory, it, it really does underscore what you're saying here is that there's a lot to be said to uh, invest upfront in a long-term relationship and to add value right out of the gate is uh, without somebody even paying you is really uh, the kind of world that we're, we're living in now and letting people experience what that's like. And, and when you embrace that, you start to not only build a partnership with your customers, but you become partners with them. You become sort of the same side of the table and you're helping them solve problems that, uh, you know, that these are new things for them and they're trying to figure out how do I, how do I solve for that? So uh, congrats on, on doing that. Walk me through like an example of that. What, what does that look like for you guys when, you know, you're, you're working with a company and somebody raises their hand and says, I'm, I'm really interested in working with you guys. Um, what, what's that engagement like, you know, at the, the very beginning when you're starting to work with them? Yeah, absolutely. You know, our, our engagement, um, you know, as I mentioned, really takes place before they ever raise their hand. Um, we've, uh, we have taken the stance of, of, uh, and it's, it's generally an unpopular stance. Um, but with the support of Jen, our CEO, we've taken the stance of ungating all of our content. Um, so, you know, if, if you're out there searching for, uh, you know, how, how, what are the things I need to be looking for to, uh, to not get sued, uh, from yeah. a compliance standpoint, um, you know, we have, we have a number of resources of things that you should be looking out for and you don't have to give us your name, phone number, and email address to get that stuff. Um, you know, just because you need help in that area, doesn't mean that you're raising your hand and you're ready to work with us. Uh, but we're going to have those resources based off of those kinds of searches and those things that people need. And so when, you know, when people are are getting those those resources in hand and they're um, they're getting to the point where they say, yes, I I understand the need for a lead management software um, and I'm ready to I have the budget. I'm ready to start looking into acquiring something like that, uh, you know we have our traditional book a demo forms online that, you know, a lot of people will go to people will search us on Google and, and uh, you know, book the dem book a demo online. Uh, but we get a number of customer referrals, just people that they're like, Hey, you guys got to check this out. Like this, the software is truly amazing. Uh, there's others out there like it, uh, but there's, there's really nothing like it in, in how they support your team. Um, and honestly, like with some of the, some of the pieces that we put out there, uh, it's not uncommon for people just to email me directly and just say, Hey, uh, I loved your stuff and I buy into what you're doing. Um, I've heard a lot about you from, you know, your social posts and things like that. Like, can I just get a demo? Can you show me like what your platform looks like? 
And of course, I'm happy to do it. Uh, but I, you know, I'll connect them with a member of our sales team, and and uh, a lot of our introductions happen just from email, um, because people are, you know, they they appreciate and and have have been delivered so much value uh, before ever recognizing they need our platform. So, um, so yeah, that's that's really you know a number of ways that introductions are made. A lot of m- the majority of them happen organically. You're speaking my language with all of that with content. You know that, right? So it, <laughs> it, it, we, we live in a world where we're all doing our own due diligence at various paces and being able to provide resources like that for people, especially when they're in that moment of discovery, uh, really helps to establish expertise and authority in your category. And, and the fact that you're doing that, um, you know, really helps to create value right out of the gate. For, for your prospect and uh, and drives that engagement. And then certainly, like you mentioned, with all the social media uh, content and insights that you guys share, uh, it, it, it drives engagement to a lead and then into a, a new sale. So um, way, way to go for harnessing that. That's uh that's yeah. a lot of companies, a lot of companies don't do that. And and I think that your your stance on uh, not gating that content makes it that much more accessible. Um, you know, Google crawls that content and indexes it. And that's great for SEO as well. So uh, really good, good way to utilize that as a resource for your prospects in that, that circumstance. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's been a game changer for us. Um, you know, no one's sitting around at three o'clock in the afternoon, hoping for someone to call them because they downloaded an ebook. <laughs> um, you know, like uh, no one's sitting around waiting for that phone call. But uh, you know, what it's really strengthened our brand and built an affinity for our brand by delivering you know those helpful resources up front uh, to where it's not uncommon that when somebody is ready for a demonstration of our product, they're not even considering anyone else uh, because they built such a strong relationship beforehand. Very cool. Love that. Um, I guess my last question for you here is, as you're looking out a year from now, so let's say you know, end of 2023, what would you like to be celebrating? Yeah, you know, hopefully we'll be we'll be celebrating that $12 million mark in, uh, you know, in, in annual recurring revenue. Um, you know, not for the same reasons that a lot of people will look at that. Um, you know, we don't look at it as $12 million in revenue. Uh, but what we look at that is, you know, twelve million dollars in revenue means that we have, you know, more than doubled our customer count. So we're, you know, we're providing value for for more than double the number of customers that we're serving now. And with every, you know, with every every customer comes, you know, a thousand to two thousand employees uh, that that uh, by and large we're helping to serve as well. So just uh, really demonstrates the the um, you know the the depth of our of our reach and our impact. And uh, so that's that's one of the main reasons we celebrate that number is because we know that we're you know that we're providing a value that that uh, people are willing to put their dollars behind and make the investment in. Yeah, those are votes of confidence, and that's uh, that's really great to hear. I love your story. It's a, it's a really great story to hear how you're helping companies grow like that and uh, manage risk management on the one hand while still providing a great employee experience overall. And as we as we all know. Happy employees make happy customers. So if you're helping your clients become happy with their and happy employees in their environment, they're having a good customer experience on their end as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Brandon, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much, Brandon. Yeah, thanks for having me, Andy. It was great to be here. Yeah, Brandon Salisbury, VP of Marketing at Tilt. It's at hellotilt.com. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Andy. 